name is Jacob Wetzke. I'm here today to talk about this wonderful Marcus Gilmore solo that I've been learning over the last little while. It comes from a live video at the Chicago Jazz Festival, uh, September 5th, 2015. They're playing on an arrangement of uh, It's Alright With Me, the jazz standard. I read in the comments that it's a contrafact called It's Not Alright With Me, the more you know. It features Mark Turner on the tenor saxophone, Jason Palmer on the trumpet, and Joe Martin on the bass. And I, one of the phrases that Marcus plays in this solo that I really love a lot is this quintuplet idea. So he plays the first partial of the quintuplets with his feet, using this ostinato that he already has going. He plays the remaining four, the inner ones, with his hands. Right, using different stickings depending where it's going and then he voices it in a couple of specific ways. I'll just run through some of the combinations that I found in the solo. Right. And then it seems like what he likes to do is play fluidly between 16th notes, these quintuplets, sometimes triplets as well, sometimes sextuplets. Um, taken together, it creates this illusion that he's almost playing off of the grid, playing out of time, but it's very much in time. It just has this very fluid feeling because it never settles in too deeply to any one specific subdivision. So I'll do a little bit of improvising with that idea in mind. Another thing that Marcus does in this solo that I love is when he is playing a subdivision for a while, 16th notes in this case as I'll show, he does a classic sort of expanding and contracting, a, a rubato approach. So he'll take the first half of the phrase and play it a little bit faster, and the second half of the phrase a little bit slower than where the actual metronomic subdivision would be. So it adds up to the same amount of time, but in between you're in this strange fluid space, and it sounds really good taken all together. Um, this one phrase that he plays sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's straight. I'll do it one more time. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then he takes this approach. So the first half, basically the stuff on the toms, is a little bit faster. And then the second half, the stuff on the snare drum, is a little bit slower. Something like this. One, two, three, four. Right, same amount of time, but in between it's got this loopy thing. One, two, three, four. Another phrase I want to draw attention to, I don't really have any analysis here, I just want to bring it up because it's really good. Uh, it's bar 51, if you have the transcription. Beat 3 of bar 51. I spent forever practicing this one beat. It's, it's pretty challenging. It sounds like this. All right, so it ends with those two double strokes, and the last note is a rim shot. traditional grip, that's something I spent a lot of time practicing, just because I wanted to get that movement together. He plays it with match grip, and it sounds really clean, but it's just something that I wanted to do for myself. And then I spent a while just isolating that movement. It's, it's, a, it's a fun one to play. Last thing I want to draw attention to from this is this sort of four beat pickup that he plays going into the downbeat a lot of the time. So we four notes, bass drum, left, left, stick on stick, and then the downbeat is another stick on stick, so kind of a five note cluster. Right. And then usually from there he would he would continue on and, and play some different phrases off of the right hand.
uh, messing around with that movement. Well, thank you for listening. I hope that you've enjoyed this video, this, this analysis. If you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know. I hope you have a, a good rest of your day. Take care.